December 2019 and the time is 6 p.m. each night. The venue is Grace Cathedral behind the Junction Mall along Tamabish Road, Accra. Your host is Reverend and Wendy E. Moses, guest ministers, Apostle Itoro Etefia. You are more than this! You are older than this! You are richer than this! I came to tell you that you are greater than this! Prophet Jose Kofi. Whatever has limited you over the years come to an end today. Amen. Ministering in songs, Mr. Sean Elliott and Sam Sachs from Nigeria. Date is from Monday 25th of November to Sunday 1st of December 2019. And the time is 6 p.m. each night. For further inquiries, please call the numbers. Are you ready for God's word? Pick up your Bibles wherever you are. Lift it up. I do this wherever I go to preach. Say, this is my Bible. I believe it's the word of God. I am who it says I am. I can do what it says I can. I must have what it says I will. So bless me, God. Please declare your faith and confidence in God's word. Lift it up and say louder than your neighbor. This is my Bible. I believe it's the word of God. I am who it says I am. I can do what it says I can. I must have what it says I will. So bless me God. If your amen is the loudest, you will be the first to testify. Please, let's mark time to the book of Mark chapter 4. And from verse 3, you may be seated if you can. Put it on the screen as fast as possible. The book of Mark chapter 4 from verse 3 to verse 9 if you have a good bible you will notice and observe that it is written with the inscription of red to show you that these are the words of our lord jesus himself mark chapter 4 from verse 3 to verse 9 if you are better i am there if you are still looking for it say wait for me really <laughs> Mark chapter 3 is it Mark chapter 4 is everybody there from verse 3 I'd like us to read it together like a mass choir with the blessing of our voice if you went to school from verse 3 one to go hearken behold they went out a sower to sow and it came to pass as he sowed uh -huh. some fell by where you are not reading some of the seed fell by where by the wayside, I need you to locate or notice and take observation of the positions of the seed. Some fell by where? The wayside. And what happened to it? And the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. Verse 5. And some fell on what? Where? Where? And what happened to it? Where it had no much earth. And immediately it sprang up. Because it had no depth of earth. What happened to it? Verse 6. But when the sun was up, it was scorched. And because it had no root, it did what? Next verse. And some fell among what? Among what? Please notice the position. The first one fell among the wayside. The other one fell on what? Stony ground. And this one fell amongst what? Tons. And what happened to it? And the tongues grew up and choked it, and it yielded no fruit. Verse 8, read it loud and clear. And other fell on what? I can't hear you. EVM fell on what? They fell on what? And what happened to it? And did yield fruit that sprang up and increased and brought forth some how many? And some how many? 60. And some how many? 100. The last verse, verse 9, loud and clear. And he said unto them, He that had ears to hear, let him hear. You can close your Bible if you can. Permit me tonight to speak powerfully as I am led on what I would title position for harvest say it with me position for harvest say it with me position please say it if you know there is a harvest for you position 
for declare to yourself i am positioned for harvest praise as a prayer say my father position me for my harvest let me hear a loud amen bow your head let's pray spirit of the living god i stand as i've always stood i ask that you grant me the tongue of the wise and the lips of the prudent that i will declare the immortality of your counsel i ask that you will give us ears to hear and you will give us heart to believe and to receive that at the declaration of the integrity of your word tonight by it let the sick be healed let the oppressed be delivered let the captives be liberated let it not be about me tonight but let it be about what you will do in the life of a man in the life of a woman in the life of a boy in the life of a girl change somebody's story to a glory and position somebody for a mega harvest after now in jesus mighty name and let that person jump up and shout that amen like thunder let somebody who knows that the way you came here is not the way you are going back let me hear that amen like a believer let somebody who is aware that without a shadow of doubt where you used to fit in before after now your level is changing let me hear that amen like a believer lift your hands say oh god position me for my harvest please say better your neighbor say El Shaddai position me for my harvest let me hear that amen three times to the father to the son to the holy ghost say I hear say I hear say I hear here please sit down let me make an attempt to lay a foundation for what God will have us do I will start by laying foundation to teach and by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit then climax into preach so that at the end of this message we will pray and hear me we will really pray so that the aftermath of the prayer will be a testimony you will not recover from and if you are the one I'm talking about let your amen be the loudest and the longest most times before I preach I like to talk about the relevance and the efficacy of God's word in the life of a believer for those of us who are believers and you are a functional Christian I am sure you are aware that all of us are products of an incredible but believable book the Bible as it were is the most incredible but believable book that has ever existed I don't know what you see but anytime I pick my Bible to read I see incredible but believable stories stories that bypasses human understanding stories that suppresses protocols and processes stories that compresses all kinds of human and earthly principles stories like a young virgin girl how she conceived and bore a baby without the involvement of a mortal human being what does that tell you that God can bypass the process of life just to put a harvest on you story like a young man like David that God took from the backside of the desert and brought him to the forefront of the corridors of power as a king what does that tell you in spite of your background God can relegate your background to the back your foundation cannot hinder your transition to your destination I am talking about incredible but believable stories stories like a young man like Joseph in spite of family hatred in spite of wrong accusation in spite of false imprisonment God catapulted him from the prison and brought him to the corridors of power what is the implication it doesn't matter who hates you it doesn't matter who does not support you it doesn't matter who does not like you you can be who God says you are you can have what God says you have you can enter where God says you enter that is the Bible in your hand that is that book in your hand 
Pastor Stephen, you can't have the Bible and be broke. You can't have the Bible and be sick. You can't have the Bible and be vulnerable to demonic attack. Susceptible to human wickedness. Victimized by infirmities and viruses. No, sir. You can't have the Bible and be haggard, battered, and embarrassed by poverty. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible, as it were, is not a Quran. <laughs> the Bible is not a historical book. The Bible is not even the product of civilization. What makes the Bible the most incredible but believable book that has ever existed? Hear me, of all authors of other books who wrote their books and then they died, do you know that the author of the Bible is still the same yesterday? Is still the same today? Is still the same forever? Do you know the implication? What it did for yesterday? yesterday for david if i trust him today he can do it for me what he gave to abraham yesterday if i believe in him he can give it to me i prophesy by that bible in your hand your own story shall be turned to a glory your story shall be turned to a glory who am i praying for your story shall be turned to a glory lift your hands and say oh god Position me for my harvest. Let me hear that amen like a believer. Say, I hear. Say, I hear. Say, I hear. I hear. Slap your neighbor. Say, sit down. Let me hear something. It is important we know the credibility. It's important we know the efficacy. How crucial, how relevant the scripture is to us. Let me go into what God has for us. The Bible from where we read was a story Jesus gave us. And in case you think it's just a story about a farmer, can I say this in digression? Pastor Steve, the Bible is not a storybook. The Bible is not a storybook. The Bible is not even a subject to be studied in school. CRK, Bible knowledge. No, sir. The Bible, as it were, is the principles of God, the ways of God, tied to the stories of men, their conditions and locations. The Bible is not a storybook. It's the principles of God, the ways of God, to the stories of men conditions and their locations so when you read the story in the bible don't be carried away by the ambience of excitement take the underlining principle if you apply to your life whatever god did in that story can be duplicated in your life don't get too excited that abraham began to possess seven nations it is not a song abraham's blessings are mine no sir it is a principle if you take the underlying principle what abraham possesses can be duplicated in your life don't be excited that god took david from the backside of the desert and put him in the corridors of power as a king take the underlining principle apply to your life where david arrived you can arrive so the bible is not a storybook the bible is the principles of god the ways of god the order the system the structures the ideas the concept the insights of god that are tied interwoven interconnected to stories of men their conditions and their situations that is why when we read a story in the bible like the one we read jesus will say let him that have ears to hear let him hear why because the same story can be said in what is happening in your life can be said in what is happening in your family can be said in what is happening in your community so it's not about the story of a farmer it's about the principles that are here never assume you know the story of a sower don't assume assumption is the lowest level of knowledge and it has a way of keeping people in the lowest place in life so here jesus told us about the sower and for the purpose of clarity let's call him a farmer listen to me and give me your ears because i will like to end the message before i start jesus said that this
this farmer had some seeds in his hands and then he made up his mind to go to farm when he had those seeds in his hands he left his house to go and farm give me your ears ladies and gentlemen the summary of that story is that it was the same farmer it was the same kinds of seeds but different results the same farmer the same kinds of seeds but different results ladies and gentlemen my father was not a farmer but my father before he died used to have a farm and when we were very small my father will take us to the farm but hear this before my father will take us to the farm my father will carefully select the most productive looking yam the most productive looking maize the most productive looking beans before we will go to the farm so you will agree with me that this farmer like every other farmer must have taken time Time to select the seeds before he left his house to sow he carried one and looked at it and said this one can produce a hundredfold this one can produce sixtyfold this one can produce thirtyfold when he did that he left his house after careful selection he left his house with an intention he left his house with a manifestation in his heart he left his house with a, an expectation he left his house with a vision with a mission with an ambition when he looked at this in his hands he saw the manifestation ladies and gentlemen but hear me as he left his house with the seed in his hands by the time he got to the farm his expectation was not the manifestation he saw his desire was not what he acquired it was the same farmer it was the same kinds of seed in his hands but different results let me take it further i have come to realize that at the end of the day when the seeds were in the hands of the farmer nothing was wrong with the seed nothing was wrong with the seeds when they're in the hands of the farmer the seed was full of ability full of capacity full of capability for productivity of hundredfold when the seed was in the hands of the farmer nothing was wrong with the seed but child of god when the farmer went to farm when the seed left the hands of the farmer the position they see landed the ground they see landed ultimately decided the productivity where they see drop decided the achievement the accomplishment the attainment and the result and fulfillment of the seed so papa the end of my message is a conclusion that i have drawn that nothing was wrong with the farmer and nothing was wrong with the seed in the hands of the farmer but everything was wrong with the ground don't blame the farmer nothing was wrong with the farmer don't blame the seed the seed had 100 percent productivity in the hands of the farmer blame the position give me your ears ladies and gentlemen i would like to take it a bit further so we can pray the way you feel like praying are you aware in my little careful study i have come to realize that the most powerful element that god has created on earth is a seed you know why do you know that inside a seed there is a fruit inside a seed there is a tree inside that pinjombic microscopic element called seed there are heavy branches and there are trunks a seed is the most powerful element that God has ever created ladies and gentlemen are you also aware that it takes a seed to make a forest that is how powerful a seed is in case you don't know let me give you another point do you know that every seed is a groundbreaker if papa if we stop using this place now for the next three five months you will realize that in spite of the foundation and in spite of the German flooring and in spite of the tiles you will see some grasses begin to break out some of the tiles will begin to break that is how powerful the seed is the seed is the most powerful element that God has ever created let me take it further to scriptures ladies and gentlemen anytime God is talking about seed in the Bible God is referring to you as a human being God is referring to me as a human being ladies and gentlemen of all the chronicles writers of the Bible from Genesis to Revelation anytime 
time they mentioned seed, it was a typology of a human being. That was why God said to Abraham, I will multiply thy seed as a son in the easy shore. Every time God mentions seed, it's talking about us. When God needed to introduce Jesus in the Bible by his genealogy and genetic biological foundation, he introduced him as the seed of David. Sir, every time God talks about seed from Genesis to Revelation, he's referring to you, he's referring to me. Are you aware that in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26, God created man and in verse 28, when he was going to bless man and the Lord blessed man and said, be fruitful, not be seedful. So you are the seed. He was talking to the seed. Seed, be fruitful. There is a seed of greatness in you. There is a seed of prosperity in you. There is a seed of prominence in you. There is a seed of relevance in you. Every time God talks about seed, God is referring to us as human beings. Allow me to reintroduce you again to the mystery of predestination that the seed in that story was you and the farmer in the story is God. Ladies and gentlemen, by predestination, you were a seed in the hands of God the farmer before you were born. In reality, in eternity, you were a seed in the hands of God in eternity, full of ability, full of capacity, full of capability, availability for productivity. When you were in the hands of God the farmer, nothing was wrong with you god looked at you and said you are very good a perfect god cannot create an error you were a seed in his hands in eternity he finished his work and he ended the work ladies and gentlemen this is the tragedy when you left the hands of god in eternity in through time through your mother's womb the family you landed the ground you landed the position you landed the location you landed is the reason for your delay is the reason for this atrocity is the reason for this poverty is the reason for delay so ladies and gentlemen nothing is wrong with God the farmer nothing is wrong with you the seed I didn't come here as an apostle tonight I didn't come here as a, as a prophet God sent me here tonight as a farmer that wherever you landed that is not allowing your destiny to shine wherever you landed that is not making you see money in the name that is above every other name tonight I reposition you I reposition you I reposition you I reposition you I transplant you there shall be a shifting cultivation lift your hands say oh God reposition me now 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 let me hear that amen three times. Again. Again. Say here. Say here. Say here, here. Ladies and gentlemen, give me the time to convince you that when you when they go in hand the hands of God, the farmer, in eternity, nothing was wrong with you. Let me convince you that nothing is wrong with you. I know they have told you something is wrong with you. I came to tell you in eternity, in the hands of the farmer, nothing was wrong with you. You were full of ability, you were full of capacity, you were full of capability, you had the availability for productivity. When you in the hands of God in eternity, do you know who you are let us make man in our image in our likeness you were fabricated in the image of God what makes God God is what he used to fight by you you are the originality of God you are the height of his expertise you are the class of his intelligence you are too original to fail you look like your God anytime he sees you say ye are God and the children of the most high you are original you are the image of God. You are the carbon copy likeness of God. Too original to be stranded. Anybody taller than you is too tall. Anybody shorter than you is too short. Anybody fatter than you should visit the gym. Anybody slimmer than you should look for food. You are the originality of God. Lift your hands and say nothing is wrong with me. Hit 
your neighbor say nothing is wrong with me oh hit another person say nothing is wrong with me god created you and after he created you he said you are very good sir a perfect god cannot create an error nothing is wrong with you so ladies and gentlemen hear my preaching when you in the hands of god the farmer in eternity nothing was wrong with you he looked at you and said you are very good he looked at you and called you himself he breathed into you so what makes him him that is why he says ye are gods you are the children of the most high so nothing is wrong with you in the hands of god the farmer in eternity nothing was wrong with you but this is the tragedy this is the sorrow this is the mishap when you left the hands of God in eternity through time into your mother's womb ha, the family you landed <laughs> the ground you landed this community you landed the nation you landed is the reason for your tears is the reason for your pain is the reason for your delay is the reason for your failure but hear me tonight if there is a harvest I don't care why life plays if your amen can be the loudest there shall be a shifting cultivation there shall be a shifting cultivation there shall be a shifting cultivation lift your hands and say oh God position me for my harvest shout it El Shaddai position me for my testimony let me hear that amen three times to the father to the son the holy ghost say here say here say here here sit down let me talk to you a kesusu venete a quete a neke perete Matula mandele ke deke beneta Ekwete, ekwana, eke neke Efiene, efiono Ipiandu kantu mbanda ya manon kanto Go punish the devil After today When money is appear there When favor will see you appear there When helpers will meet you appear there Lift your hands and shout fire Move your leg and shout fire Turn around you and shout fire da, da, da. Shout I hear! Shout I hear! Shout I hear! Hear! Slap your neighbor! Say sit down. Let me hear something. Makato padiata, anakapata. Nothing was wrong with the farmer. Nothing is wrong with the seed. Deal with the ground. By the permission of Papa, let me push it a little further. Give me your ears. Child of God, if you are functionally literate and you live life the way I live in this generation, you will agree with me that success is a function of the right position. <laughs> Greatness is the function of the right position. Success is a function of the right position. Accomplishment in life is a function of the right position. People don't become rich because they are hardworking. People become rich because they are rightly positioned. The most hardworking person is pushing truck in the market. He has not seen money yet. It is not by hard work. It is by the right positioning. I'm telling you, fulfillment and attainment in life is a product sponsored and attenuated by the right position. You are not going to be married because you are beautiful. You will be married because you are rightly positioned. Beautiful girls are still working from prophet to prophet looking for marriage in the market of singlehood while ugly girls have married fat ones have married everybody in their train is fat fatness is not your problem position is your problem life is sponsored by the right position success is sponsored by the right position greatness is a product of the right position it is not how skillful you are you can be educated and wasted if you are not rightly positioned you can be anointed and embarrassed if you are not rightly positioned you can be potentially loaded but useless 
if you are not ready position you will have certificate and not see satisfaction you will be busy morning till night no business you will carry makeup that will never take you up you will carry catwalk and figure eight and ignored you will be popular without a property am i talking to somebody here full of activity no productivity hard work but suffer hard life born again and suffer again Sir, here. Sir, here. Sir, here, 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 here. Don't argue my preaching. I have seen educated people with certificates who are looking for jobs in companies owned by illiterates. It's a function of the right position. Ladies and gentlemen, are you aware that your position determines who sees you? And your position determines whom you can see. Where you stand determines who can see you. I am short. You don't need to remind me. But by the virtue of where I'm standing, even the blind amongst you can see me. <laughs> it determines who sees you. Your position determines who you can see. You are not yet wealthy because your position in a place where people around you don't have the provision that can commission your vision. <laughs> and so you are broke. All the people surrounding you are the people that want to collect the little you have envy you and bring you down the day God positions you with the man that carries provision then you will know that you are working with a vision that can be commissioned where you stand determines who sees you and who you can see you are busy dreaming seeing America when you are surrounded in an environment and family where nobody wants to hear about visa Tonight, there shall be a shifting cultivation. So, you are a function of the right position. If you have to be great, where you stand determines who sees you. Where you stand determines who you can see. Child of God, are you also aware that where you stand determines what can enter your hand? Pastor Stephen, where you stand determines what enters your hand. Those of us that landed in Nigeria, we are spending Naira. Those who landed in, in America, what are they spending? Dollars. Those who landed in London, what are they spending? Pounds. Those who landed in Ghana, what are they spending? City. Brother, where you stand determines what enters your hand. You are broke, busted, disgusted, harassed and battered and embarrassed by poverty because of your position. Your hands are empty. Your account is empty because of where you stand. I am telling you that success is a byproduct sponsored and attenuated by the right position. Sir, so here. Am I talking to somebody here? Sir, so here, here, here. Man of God, are you aware that even if God prophesies, prophecy will never come to fulfillment until you are rightly positioned? God will look like a liar. The pastor will become a flatterer because you are wrongly positioned. Nothing is wrong with the pastor. Nothing is wrong with God. Nothing is even wrong with you. Everything is wrong with your position. Are you aware? It was not Elijah that prophesied. It was not Elisha or Jeremiah. Neither was it Ezekiel. It was God that prophesied to Abraham. I will bless you. You shall be blessed. Bless them that bless you. Cause them that curse you. Make you father of many nations. Multiply thy see God gave Abraham seven prophecies ladies and gentlemen prophecy from the mouth of God fell why Abraham became 90 years he was old and stricken of age none of the things God said came to pass but ladies and gentlemen in Genesis chapter 12 and verse 1 God came and saw Abraham nothing is wrong with me nothing is wrong with you something is wrong with your position Abraham leave your father's house leave your kindred leave your people go to a place that I will show you ladies and gentlemen when Abraham left there prophecies came to pass there is a place called the place when you enter there your bank accounts will know when you enter there even the chicken in your house you know you have arrived lift your hands and say oh God take me to my day place 
The Bible says, "Bless God, the bless. Go to the place that I will show you." Shout, my Father, my Helper. Take me to my the place. Forget the English. Enter the position. Sir, here. Yeah. Sir, here. Yeah. Sir, here, yeah, here. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, where you stand determines your, your, the fulfillment of your prophecy. Are you also aware that no matter the vision you have, vision can be truncated if you are in the right position. Dreams can be punctured if you are, in, sorry, if you are in the wrong position. Your ideas, concept, and insight can vanish, aborted, and excommunicated if you are in the wrong position. Can you dream more than Joseph? Joseph was busy dreaming dreams. He saw thrones. Papa, he saw kingdom. He saw rulership. People were bowing down for him. But where did he have that dream? In a land where there was no king. There was no throne. There was no kingdom. His dream suffered delay. But the day God wanted to bring his dream to fulfillment, God catapulted him from that land to the land of Egypt where there was a king. Where there was a throne. Where there was a kingdom. And his dreams came to pass. Ladies and gentlemen, if you don't have the right position, you will dream and never wake up. Your vision will be catapulted and truncated somewhere. Your ideas, concept, insights will be bottled up in delay. It is the right position that sponsors dream fulfillment. It is the right position that brings vision manifestation. And I pray for 120 of you under the sound of my voice. This year will not be over. The dream you have for 2019 be positioned for it. I like that image. Be positioned for it. Be positioned for it. Shout, oh God, position me now. I know what I'm preaching. You will pray, and all you will have to show is body odor and sweat. Sweat. If you don't, you are not rightly positioned. <laughs> You will become a prayer mantis by prayer. Fasting machine. If you are not rightly positioned, you will see answers. <laughs> and I see some people say, I'm educated. Some say, I'm talented. My dear, you will be talented and wasted. Potentially loaded and bloated. If you are not rightly positioned. The best preachers are not yet on television. Wrong position. Sunday school teachers are wasting television time. Pastor Steve, I'm aware of what I'm teaching. You will be beautiful and wasted with makeup that will never take you up if you are not rightly positioned. I should go deeper. Are you aware that David had the potential and the talent to kill lions? In case you think it was straight by luck, it was not by luck. He didn't fluke it. Hear the story of David. I was taking care of my father's sheep, and then a lion came and took one of it. He didn't say I ran to defend myself. He said I ran after it. Open the mouth of the lion, deliver the sheep from the mouth, and devour the lion. Hit your neighbor. Say that is talent. And you think, in case you think he was just trying, he said, and another day, <laughs> a wild bear came and carried one of the sheep. I ran after it, opened the mouth and delivered the sheep and devoured the bear. That is potential. But ladies and gentlemen, he was doing all this exploit of potentials in a bush where no relevant person saw him. The day God wanted his destiny to shine, God brought him face to face with a national problem, Goliath. When he confronted the head of Goliath, a bush boy became a king. Am I talking to somebody here? I prophesy where your helper will hazy you, I position you there. Where your helper will locate you, I position you there. Where your potential will be maximized, I position you there. Lift your hands, shall fire. Move your legs, shall fire. Shake your body, shall fire. Shake your body, shall fire. Say, oh God. 
forget my neighbor position me don't let my next birthday catch me like this don't let another year meet me at this level I am preaching so I know what I'm saying talented and wasted anointed but found in a congregation where they are accusing you instead of celebrating you full of certificates with all kinds of, your, of, 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 of qualification on your CV but found in an area where your, where your, where your specialization is not needed You know what to do, but you are where you cannot do it. Some have food, but cannot eat. Some can eat, but have no food. Your talented can be wasted. Your talent, your potential can be truncated. Papa, recently, I got to realize that the, that was the gift of a man make it way for him but it is it is are you aware that it is not about your gift alone it is not about your potential it is not about how talented you are it is about who you display the gift to <laughs> sir footballer in cambridge is not the same thing with footballer in itu bridge the two now bridge, but the position is different. Papa, it is position that decides our location. So it doesn't matter whether it is a bridge, where it is position matters. Cambridge footballer may not be as talented as the one in it to bridge, but because of the virtue of the location, the allocation is different. The one in it to bridge, there is no prominent person apart from a fisherman who will just prophesy to him, you will go far and give him fish. The one in Cambridge is receiving thousands of pounds. He may not be more talented. Can I position somebody here? Where your destiny helper is standing as you walk out of the door of this church, enter there now. Where your helper will see you, enter there. Lift your hands and say, Oh God, position me now. What did you say, sir? Your preaching is good. Sir, it's location that decides our location. No? The budget where you people are is even from the budget where we are. <laughs> On our budget plenty, oh, because in that location, oil there. Where we then are rubber. I'm telling you, it's location that decides our location. So it's not about your gift, it's about who you display it to. Sir, you can't interpret dreams like Joseph. He has been interpreting dreams as a local champion by his family. It didn't make sense. In the house of Pharaoh, it didn't make sense. In the prison, it didn't make sense. But the day he interpreted the dream of a Pharaoh. The man that baps your hair, is he not Baba? The one where they bap president, hey, is he not Baba? Oh, no be one head. Now the person will get the head, now he determine the amount. Now there you go, no say head past head. Some head now head rod. Can I pray for somebody? Whoever has the resources you need, whoever has the money you need, whoever has the combination you need, whoever has the signature you require, whoever has the recommendation you need, as you walk out of the door of this church, I position you before them. I position you before them. The Bible says that the heart of the king is in the hands of God. Every king that has the help that you need that will take you to your next level, I turn their heart to your direction. I turn their heart to your direction. In that name.
night the king could not sleep whoever has what you need to become who you need to be i remove rest from them they will cross your path they will call your phone they will meet you in the trust key they will meet you at the gas station they will meet you in the church slip your hands and say oh god position me now and your gifting and your anointing the day I preached in front of a governor's wife was the day my, my level changed I was still a good preacher but the good that brings the goodness that brings the goods of life is because of the person you've met with goods because you can look good and not have goods Papa am I wrong? You can be beautiful and not fruitful. And life is not good without goods. <laughs> sir, here. Sir, here. Sir, here, here. Let me take it a little further so we can play. Am I talking to somebody here? Are you feeling yourself shifting? Are you seeing yourself moving? Are you seeing money standing by you? Are you seeing your helper asking you, what do you want? If your amen is the loudest and the longest, be positioned. Be positioned. Be positioned. Let me hear that amen like a believe. Shout, my father, my father, my father. Position me now for my harvest. Look at your neighbor and say, I know you are handsome. I know you are beautiful. But be positioned. Tell another person, I know you are talented. I know you are gifted. I know you are anointed. But be rightly positioned. Sir, here. Sir, here. Sir, here, here. Hear me. Where you stood in 2019, by the time I am done with you, is going to be another position for 2020. Your next birthday will not catch you at this level. Your next birthday will not catch you at this level. Your next birthday will not catch you at this level. Let me hear the loudest and the longest ever. Somebody say here. Say here. Say here, here. Give me five minutes to round up. Let us pray. Are you blessed tonight? Ladies and gentlemen, if you listen to the story, Jesus told us different positions that the seed landed. Are you aware that we read it together? Some of the seed left the hands of the farmer and landed on a wayside. Say wayside. Say wayside. And I asked the Holy Spirit, what is wayside? And he said to me, there are some of us that landed on a family called wayside family. Ladies and gentlemen, when I asked him what is a wayside family, he said to me, a wayside family is a family that nothing good happens to them. The only weakness others celebrate, they never celebrate. Nothing happens by the wayside. The Bible says the bow vow of the bed came, the vows of the air came and took the seed and devoured it. A wayside family is a family that nothing good ever happens. You watch others celebrate, when will you celebrate? You sew uniform for everybody this wedding when will they sow for your own you are always in people's marriage committee when will they gather for your sake always hearing testimonies when will you testify aeroplane no be dead they enter now human being enter when will you enter watching others on television when will they watch you because you landed on the west side family when nothing good ever happens hear me i prophesy for many of you who landed in such family after you stamp your feet and shout amen it is your turn to celebrate 
it is your turn to marry it is your turn to be a helper it is your turn to assist others lift up your hands and say oh god every wayside family that is not allowing me to celebrate that is resisting my testimony in the name of jesus transplant me now always watching others always a passenger when will you drive your car always squatting when will you have your house because you left the hands and you landed on a wayside family and anytime any good thing comes the fowl of the air will devour it up by the grace from the hands of my father I stand on this altar wherever you landed that is the reason for this confusion called a wayside family wherever you landed that has taken away your help and taken away your favor if your amen can be the loudest and the longest arrive where celebration is waiting I reposition you now I reposition you now I reposition you now I reposition you now it's your turn to shine it's your turn to count in billions it's your turn to celebrate it is your turn to marry it is your turn to travel abroad it's your turn to own the company lift your hands and say oh God uproot me from every wayside family now 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 let me hear that amen three times to the father again again wayside family i may not be talking to everybody but i'm talking to somebody So some of the seed landed on the wayside papa and then some of the seed landed on a stony ground some version of the bible call it hard ground and i asked god what is a hard ground he says some of them landed on a hard ground family a hard ground family is a family that never has enough to finish the bible said the seed began to grow but because it didn't have enough soil it withered and it died ladies and gentlemen hard ground family a family that never has enough to finish they start school they stop halfway they learn a trade they stop halfway they start a building an investment they stop halfway he collected the bride price and the list come back and pay the diary he cannot pay till today because you landed on a hard ground family the house your father began to bill when you were a child you now he has not been able to complete it it's that stop halfway grass has filled the whole cement the whole sun is finished because you landed on a hard ground family where people don't finish what they start you start the relationship now it ends somewhere you start another one it stops somewhere you start another one he broke your heart your problem is not man your problem is husband because you landed on a hard ground family Jesus told us a story he said there was a man who intended had an intention and a vision and a mission and ambition to build a tower he finished the architectural drawing and Jesus said he started the foundation but was not able to finish it and passers by mocked him and they said this man began to build but was not able to finish his problem was not the ability to start his problem was the capacity to finish you always know how to start but you don't know how to finish but I heard the Lord speak to my right here the hands of Zerubbabel had laid the foundation his hands shall also finish it give me your two hands where your father stop that will be your starting point where your mother ended that will be your beginning whatever your hand started your hand will finish well 
you will finish that academics you will finish that proposal you will complete that building project you will complete that visa that marriage will hold lift your hands and say oh god i must finish what i start never has enough to finish never I have seen pastors who started before me they are now taxi drivers anointed if they preach right now the tears will some assault did God call them yes some are from, some are some are farmers now taxi drivers I know of one who opened the church closed down open again, close down started it as a fellowship, he has closed down he's trying to start it again he's now a house agent is he called? yes is he anointed? yes is he gifted? yes does he have fire? yes but he's wrongly positioned in a hard ground hard ground hard ground hard ground <laughs> hard ground. I'm careful not to give certain testimonies until God allows me to give. Two hours yesterday, I didn't give any. Today, I won't give any until God permits me. I want you to hear the word and by yourself, take the word and remove yourself from where you are. I don't want to convince you. I'm not a preacher that manipulates. I won't have to brainwash. I won't have to compel an Akasho. No, I will give you the word. Let it become flesh. The word knows what to do. Hard ground. Never has enough to finish. I, 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 I feel like praying, Papa. Hear me. Some landed on the wayside family. Some of us landed on the hard ground. Papa, some of them landed on thorns. And the thorns choke it and it died. And God said to me, There is a family called Tony family. And I said, God, what is a Tony family? He said, Son, you won't understand it until you take it back to your Nigerian language, Chuku Chuku family. <laughs> so that you can pray well. Chuku Chuku family. In sincerity, I asked the Holy Ghost, what is Chukuchuku family? And the Lord said to me, Chukuchuku family is a diabolic family. Father, wizard. Mother, witch. Brother, necromancer. Sister, enchanter. Cousin, diviner. Uncle, soothsayer. Auntie, necromancer. Grandfather, babalawo. Grandmother, Mama Lawo. The other one, Uncle Lawo. The other one, Auntie Lawo. The other one, Cousin Lawo. So you want to start school? They chook you. Auntie, I want to marry. They chook you. I have a mission. They chook you. Uncle, visa don't come. They chook you. I want to start the business. They chook you. Jesus said the enemy of a man is a member of his house council. Ladies and gentlemen, some of us landed in a diabolic family where they are monitoring your progress where they are eyeing your destiny somebody is responsible for these tears somebody is responsible for this delay don't go to Sokoto check your Sokoto a enemy of a man is in a member of his own household Chuku Chuku uncles are everywhere you landed in a diabolic family but the Lord said in the care in the year that King Hosea died Isaiah saw whoever is responsible for these tears whoever has a hand in this sorrow if you shout fire like thunder may they go down for your sake chuku chuku family suffer not a witch Your problem is not in Sokoto. 
Check inside your shokoto. The enemy of a man is a member. Is the church not a household? It's a member of his household. So even in church, they are chukutuku. Today, people go come to church. Tomorrow, people know they who pursue them. And the ones that are talking, cho -cho 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 -cho, pursuing them, they are still here. What are you still doing when you are pursuing them? Every Chuku Chuku member. is preaching, Judas is calculating the change. Kidnapping did not start today. Judas is not an ordinary member. Judas is not even a worker or a pastor. Judas is in the board of trustees. In fact, if you read theology very well, Judas was not one of the disciples Jesus chose on the street. Judas was a childhood friend of Jesus. And in case you are not aware, the most trusted is the one that keeps money. So for him to be the treasurer, he was the most trusted. He healed the sick. The thing rise, value rise. He healed the cripple. The money increased. He raised the dead. The value rise. They came to Judas, give us Jesus. We will give you 20 pieces of silver. Judas said, talk well. Not be today bargaining, Stato. <laughs> they successfully bargained and kidnapped your Lord and personal Savior by the instrumentality of an insider, Chuku Chuku. Talk well. He said, okay. We will give you 25 pieces. He said, with all the power, where did the man body? She will not come the first time, will not fall. When I come the second time, the man disappeared. Talk well! The wall half years before Peter go here. Say, we give you 30 pieces of silver. I say, you have talked. Follow me! They say like that. The last time we know what thing happened. Say, follow me! I am too friendly for him to succeed. To, to suspect. Follow me. Sometimes... Your enemies, you are safer with your enemies than your friends. Because your enemies are far. But your friends, they are very close. And some of the people you call friends are not your friends. They are your frenemies. Bite you and blow like that. Do you know that rat? They are bite and blows. Frenemies. Follow me. I am too friendly for Jesus to suspect. Say, come. The one that I will kiss, he is the one. He said, just like that. See how simple it was to arrest Jesus by the instrumentality of an insider. Carry your prophetic finger up like this. Pray this one prayer. Every insider. Selling me to outsiders. Pray it well. Every insider. Selling me to outsiders. Before you succeed. Holy God. Kiss Jesus. See how simple it was. Kiss Jesus. Papa is preaching. They are not hearing anything. Busy calculating the man's very handsome man. Hi. Mama is lucky. Hi. Young man. Handsome. Dynamic. Anointed. See his belt. See his shoe. Why you rush Mary now from beginning of message to the end calculating the downfall of the man of God? Not hearing anything. Chuku chuku. Whoever has white teeth and black hearts that is around you. Oh. 
Whoever looks good but is not good. <laughs> Whoever is awake at night when you are sleeping. Whoever is laughing when you are complaining. Whoever is responsible for this, your reproach. Whoever has a hand on this disappointment. Whoever has a hand on this catastrophe. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Lift your hands and say, Oh God. Every tuku tuku in my father's house in my mother's house in my surrounding in my neighborhood in my church in my business around my life what are you waiting for die by fire now 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 clap your hands and pray name we pray you are not angry enough by now you should be living in your house you are not angry enough your mother's children have overtaken you your parents are already disappointed in you you are not angry enough if you had a way to decide where to land you would have decided the house of the president but you cannot decide where you landed but you can take responsibility for where you will end. You didn't decide where they landed you. You just found yourself there. Unto us a child is born. Children are just born. You are just born. Some of you born by in wedlock, outside wedlock, by corridor. Any, corridor back your marriage your father was playing with your mother didn't marry things how some of you you were born by mistake it doesn't matter how you were born you can decide where you will end my father some of us came from Lungwateshi. some came from spintex some of us came here from choco some from santa maria i don't dare taste more now some from Kaneshi, some from East Legon, some from Labadi, Laboni. Some of us came by leg, some drove our cars, some came by KK, some by Trotsky, some by Uber. But it doesn't matter how we came and where we came from, all of us we are here. How 
how you were born does not matter. You are just born as a child. Unto us, a child is born. But unto us, sons are given. Sonship is a place of personal responsibility. It is not age that makes you mature. It is responsibility. Thank God for my father. Thank God for my mother that gave birth to me. Even if they didn't send me to school, they have done their part. Take responsibility from where you find yourself. Responsibility is gotten from two words. Responsibility. The ability to respond to your location. Take it. Do you know that you can have 52 year old child and you can have a 17 year old man? The difference is not age. The difference is responsibility. Let me tell you what challenged me in life. Sometimes if I tell you my age, you may not listen to my gospel. I arrived life very early because I took responsibility early. I know the age I told my parents never buy me shoe or clothes again. I was the one buying for my elder ones. Buying for my friends. Let me tell you something that should make you pray well. Some of you feel that age, maturity is a function of age. Or put it rightly, Papa. Some of us feel that future is a calculation of age and time. But are you aware that there are some people who are 12 years, 15 years old. They've already thought around the world. They have arrived their future waiting for their age to meet them. <laughs> some of you, you are waiting for age to take you around the world. When I'm 40, I will marry. When I'm 45, I will be in a house. When I am this, my friend, let me tell you. <laughs> future is not a calculation of age. There are people who have arrived their age. Sitting down, they have arrived their, arrived their future. Global future. Great future. Shining. They are just waiting for age to come and meet them where they are. If you can't pray today, you are chuku chuku. Put your hand on your head. Remove your shoe because his feet watch. Remove your shoe. Remove your shoe. Penny, come here. Remove your shoe. Remove your shoe. Stand on the background. Stand. Let your legs top touch this ground. Wherever I landed, that is not allowing my destiny to shine. Wherever I landed, that is making life mock me. That is a product of the delay. Do you know some of you? You are in the city, but you are still having dreams, seeing yourself in the village. Whatever planted you in that place. Some of you have graduated from the university. But you still have dreams. See yourself in your primary school uniform. No wonder the delay. Lift your hand and say, position me. I want you to be sincere to yourself. If you are a man, a son, you will take responsibility. I don't care about the family I landed. By the time I am done, I will not be their sibling. I will be their destiny helper. Yeah. Decide not to be like the rest of them. Decide to be the best of them. I am the answer to their prayers. I am the harvest they have been waiting for. I am the solution to their problem. Put your two hands on your head if you can pray tonight. Say, oh God, thank you for revelation. Thank you for information. Thank you for instruction. 
if there is any sin in my life that will hinder my prayer I stand on the blood of Jesus I receive redemption my father my helper every wayside family that I landed every hard ground family that I landed every chukuchuku family that I landed responsible for my shame responsible for this delay responsible for these tears responsible for struggle responsible for reproach responsible for this embarrassment in the name of Jesus hear me hear me hear me hear me Papa let us separate the sons from the children some of the seed landed on the wayside sir apostle some landed on the high ground some landed on chuku chuku but are you aware there are some that landed on a good ground and they bear hundredfold there is a family called good ground when you land there your children don't look for visa <laughs> but at the mention of your name I'm telling you <laughs> that they just mention your name they, they know where to go diplomatic side they don't apply for visa I was going to preach in Moscow, Russia and we were four Nigerians who found ourselves I flew from Dubai went to Dubai for a while use Aeroflot the Russian flight to fly 13 hours down when we know Nigerians we had to locate ourselves by the Barapo and Pigeon English at that point nobody cared whether you be pastor, engineer, politician or thief as long as we they talk the same language we are friends so we began to paraborize after now waiting we found the way to beg the people to sit in one place so we can communicate till we land our destination sir we had a swell time gisting in pigeon none of them knew I was a pastor by the time we landed Moscow Russia ladies and gentlemen <laughs> we were going to collect a transit visa I was going to spend like a week or two all of us were going to spend like a week or two so we needed a transit visa by the time we landed, there is no even Russian embassy in Nigeria. We were going, ladies and gentlemen, one of us began to go this way. Four of us were going like this. In my mind, that guy, he no no Russians, then go beat him. He left us. He started going this way. We were going. I was watching him. Others say, where did they go? I said, leave him. He no know who Russians be. <laughs> leave him. People went off and speak English. As they speak, they vex them. When you see police in Russia, you know police is police. Not the one in our country. Every police is shot. If you are not a giant, you cannot be a police there. He was going. I was waiting to see what they would do to him. Only for me to look at where he was going. They wrote the diplomats. In our side, economy. If you see the queue that was waiting for us. <laughs> the guy arrived immediately he removed his international passport and show they brought a chair to the other side gave him he sat down brought him newspaper brought him coffee he was drinking while they were attending to his passport see our own queue <laughs> papa i tell the truth with all sense of responsibility and spirituality i was angry by the time i reached the russian of, uh, visa officer the girl was asking me all kinds of questions just to give me visa who are you? What is your name? The name of your wife? The name of your dog? The name of your chicken? All kinds of questions. I was just being patient and answering her with anger. When she finally stamped our visa. This young man, they have stamped his home since and put him in the VIP lounge waiting for us. By the time we arranged ourselves for and moved over to the other side, he came out from nowhere. Oh, my brothers, how far now? When I don't finish, I told him, shut up! <laughs> Sir, before I became a pastor, I was an area boy. So I am an area pastor. <laughs> Are you following what I'm saying? Huh? I don't take nonsense. Moses came out of Egypt, but he, came, he was out of Egypt. But they still say, behold, an Egyptian. <laughs> There is, some, there is some part of me where God bring you from your weakness is your place of ministry 
is for a purpose. I am rugged, dogged. Don't try me, oh, forget this face. I question people's strengths. I told him, shut up! No carry me, Joko. Who are you? Please be rugged or else you won't get answers. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If you are not rugged, you cannot get answers. The weapon of our warfare are not carnal. But hear me, there are some things that you need to be carnal about in this life to get it. We are not of the world, but we are in the world. They wanted to arrest Jesus. Peter removed knife. Peter is a fisherman. What is he doing with sword? No, now. When protocols weigh bones and weigh suit and cover, you say, these guys, these guys may be... Peter is a fisherman. What is his... They, they carry sword, cut fish. Cut off the ear. Jesus said, no, 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 no. This time, don't fight. Carry the ear and fix back. And told him, return back your sword to the shield. You will need it another day, not now. Put it back. He didn't say throw it away. There is rugidity in my system to get whatever I want. I told you yesterday, you cannot be great until you are a mafia. Even the way I preach, you will see it. My gospel is forceful. <laughs> Who are you? The guy said, ah, okay, sorry. I am the son of the minister of ta 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 ta, -ta in Nigeria. Before I came, my name was already waiting. So all I needed to do was to show them my passport. Then I knelt down on the ground, not for him. And I swore, ah, ah, if I don't give my children a name in this life, people go die plenty. <laughs> That is the place of sonship we're talking about. If you don't have a heart, you cannot eat of the good of the land. If you are willing. Put your hand on your head. One prayer and I get out of my face. For you to enter the good ground that your children will come and not pray the same prayer point again. <laughs> I am talking about entering a good ground where your children are born. They don't understand what struggle is. I told God, may my children not ask me a question I cannot answer. Why are you, why do you know everybody on TV, daddy, and you are not on TV? <laughs> One of my pastor's friends, his child, asked, that, asked him a question. Daddy, why is it that all of your friends are driving big cars, Range Rover, like a Postle Toro, they are driving big, 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 big Jeep. Daddy, why don't you like Jeep? No, no, say no before like oh. <laughs> now for Malachi. May my children not ask me questions I cannot answer. Put your hand on your head. When the seed landed on the good ground, it produced a hundredfold. Hear me. Look at me. Look at me. Protocols, I will need you to stand here now. Look at me. I preach, and when I was preaching, I told you whenever God is talking about seed, God is referring to who? you as a human being you are going to pray this one prayer and you pray it by planting yourself on a good ground and there is no other good ground than the altar the reason why you are where you are is because of your biological father's house the reason why you will be in a good ground is because of your spiritual father's altar your biological father represents where you are coming from your spiritual father is a pointer to where you are going so I don't care where you landed, wayside family, hard ground family, you are going to plant yourself on a good ground, on the altar of your father. Wherever money will see you, wherever destiny helpers will find you, you will appear there. We are going to pray this one prayer. You will take a seed by tomorrow evening as a seed, we are talking about a seed, representing yourself. I'm not stressing you. I am telling you what you are able to do and if you are not able to do, you need to borrow to do it. You will take a seed. What I have given to you is more than what I'm calling. But you will take a seed of a hundred Ghana city. And you will plant that seed on this altar by planting yourself. Hear me. 
Hear me. Please. Hear me. You will put it in an envelope and you will write your son name on it. If you have it here, you will drop it here now. As I give you this prayer topic, if you can do it to plant yourself for your sake and for the sake of your generation, God is not interested in giving you prosperity. He wants to give you posterity. As we pray, your own, you, you will run to the altar. You will kneel down by the altar, hold the horns of the altar in prayer and pray that prayer by planting yourself. If you have it now, bring it. If you don't have it now, you will bring it tomorrow evening. Then you will run to the altar, kneel down. You will pray this prayer. Put your hand on your head. As we pray, don't wait to be told. Run out and hold the altar. Stand by the water so nobody hits it. Say in the name of Jesus.